Landing in places that aren't airports is some of the best flying, but it has to be approached with a lot of safety. I'm working up to landing on a river sandbar for the first time, which has always been a dream of mine, but it's definitely the shortest airstrip I've ever tried landing on. So today I'm teaming up with TAC Aero to try to make that dream a reality. TAC Aero is an elite flight school that specializes in backcountry instruction. They're located in the Texas Hill Country and they have a sweet hangar full of cubs. I sat down with Ian Waghorn, who's the director there at TAC Aero, and we started with several hours of ground instruction. Now, luckily, Ian's from South Africa, so everything he says is automatically way more interesting. As we flare, even though we can sort of flare the aircraft, decelerate, our energy wants to go in this direction, not in this direction. And that's why we'll often say it's more of an arrival than a perfect landing, but we kind of want that. We want the aircraft to touch down firm, but not hard. You don't want to bounce but you want to have a nice firm landing, your momentum is traveling vertically, and you have less momentum and energy moving forward. We covered backcountry, tailwheel, and short field operations. And then we also studied a good deal of accidents that can happen in this type of flying and how to mitigate your risk. And the next morning, it was time to go fly. Equipped with a helmet and all, I thought I finally looked like Maverick from Top Gun. Then, once I watched the footage, I realized I kind of just looked like a chubby Michigan Wolverines fan or something. So it's good to check your pride at the door, especially for the type of flying we were about to go do. My instructor, Chris, is not from South Africa, but he's a really talented pilot and a really encouraging guy. You'll hear from him from the back seat throughout our flight. I really loved flying with him. This is good. We'll get a little ways away from <laughs> town. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he'll get up and get some nice pictures of you. The flight plan was to do some slow flight and stalls, then landing technique on a big runway, and then visit progressively shorter airstrips, and then hopefully get to land on a sandbar by the end of the day. The first step was to practice slow flight and stalls to get comfortable with what flying slow in this airplane really feels like. It's a lot lighter and slower than my Cessna 182, and so while these maneuvers are basic, they laid a really good foundation for the day where we'd be landing in short field environments and needed to be slow. Here we go. Okay. And just kind of hold it there. I mean, that's about that's about all you get. That's about it. Next, we move to basic wheel and three-point landings. So show me a wheel landing on this next one, since okay. you're the the wheel landing expert, right? <laughs> expert is I don't even know how to spell expert. <laughs> now we weren't really concerned with how short we were landing at this point. It was just about getting comfortable in a new airplane. Oh, beautiful. Now, coming up, spot landings would be way more challenging than this. But first, we got to do another easy and super fun maneuver called drags. The idea here is simple. You just drag your wheels on the strip so you can evaluate the surface before actually landing. Now, I've never done these before, and so it was a blast. Oh, you got a touchdown. Yep. Kind of hard to be accurate with it, isn't it? Uh-huh. There you go. A little forward pressure to hold the airplane on the ground. See how with that extra speed you really want to uh -huh. fly again, right? Uh -huh. So you almost got to slow it down just a touch, right? There you're flying again, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's okay. go around. We'll try that again. Okay. So get rid of a little yeah, bit of that energy and get a little more forward pressure on the stick, and you'll you'll be a little heavier on that drag and stay on the ground the whole time. Okay. About 58 right there. Okay. Keep coming down to the runway. Yep, you're looking good. Again, like you said, you can slow down just a little bit. Might help you get down a little, little closer to your spot. And in here, you gotta, gotta get rid of that power a little bit sooner. Yeah, yeah I'm coming oh, there. Fast. You go. Yep. There you go, rolling it on a little forward pressure, and then you know, play with that throttle a little bit. Get rid of some of that power. There you go. See how it made the airplane just heavier uh -huh, all of a uh -huh. sudden. You're using pitch now to hold it on the ground. Uh -huh, so a little yep, forward pressure. Yep. There you go. See that? Okay, and then you lose a little power when you start getting too heavy and the tail wants to fall. Okay, there you go. Feel it now? Yeah, feel it. You're just keeping it flying. Okay, we felt as far as we're going to go. Let's go ahead and go around. Good job. All right, you're an easy student. I'll get harder, don't worry. Oh. And those words soon became true because doing basic landings and light to little wind was pretty straightforward. But once Chris started tightening down the screws on me a little bit and forcing me to try to hit a spot, right at stall kit configuration in a three-point landing, things got a little more interesting. Five yeah, for one's pretty good. Right, right there near that stall horn. Beautiful. Uh, shouldn't have put the power in it. Yeah, I'll bet you you were 20 feet past it. 
Okay, so how do you fix that? Get that stick back. It's pretty tough to hit your exact landing spot in three-point configuration at stall speed and not bounce. But if you can do it successfully, it means you spent all of the energy the airplane had and you made it stop flying exactly where you wanted it to stop flying, which allows you to land short. If you float past your landing target or you bounce, it means you didn't manage your energy as well and you might not be able to land as short as you need or want to. We want the aircraft to touch down firm, but not hard. You don't want to bounce, but you want to have a nice firm landing. Your momentum is traveling vertically and you have less momentum and energy moving forward. It's really, really challenging, but it's also what makes it really fun to practice. Now, my attempts here weren't really horrible, but if I want to do really short stuff one day, this needs some work. I told you I'd get difficult, you just waited. Oh no, uh -huh. you're, you're, you're absolutely normal, you know what I mean? Okay. It's, it's interesting how hard it is to get that, the airplane slowed down to where you want it, and then just kind of balancing act. Or it doesn't have more energy. Yeah, you have too much energy, you don't have enough energy, you uh -huh. bounce the airplane. We decided to continue our spot training in some different environments where I would be more forced to think about landing short. And to get to those strips, we followed the Llano River, which is gorgeous Texas flying. Our first strip was way harder than what I had been practicing. For one, it was way windier there. And there was also a huge terrain change in the first third of the runway. So you had to be really careful not to bounce hard because it was really uphill. But it was really good practice in energy management to try to make a soft landing on that steep hill. Straighten that nose out, get that wing down for the, for the wind there. Come back on the power. A little more right crosswind. Again, if it feels like you're going to get beat up. Oh yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a handful. <laughs> All right. The next private strip was a little bit shorter and it had a tree line to clear before dropping into the runway. So we were trying to touch down by a dirt road that's shortly after the tree line. So my aiming point was something short of the road. This is where spot landing became much more important. All right, how's your speed look? Real fast. Okay. Feels pretty good. Yeah, it's nice to have that little extra energy. Excellent. Nicely done. Very cool, good approach. It put you in right over those trees, didn't it? Yeah. Does that, that feel fast to you? It felt a little fast, but again, we had some wind, right? And so yeah. you want that controllability in this breeze. Yeah. So to me, that was that was really nice. It still had a little little skip, and you come in right over the power lines, right over the trees. That was, that was nice. On this next takeoff, we were planning a really cool shot with the chase plane where Hunter, the videographer, would be coming right at us and we'd get this really cool passing shot on takeoff. It's gonna be sweet. That was a cool shot, I bet. And Hunter forgot to hit record. Oh no, he's so fired. That's strike number one, Hunter. <laughs> so fired. I gotta just give Hunter a little bit of a hard time there. Nextly, we, nextly? I don't, is nextly even a word? Yes, it is a word. Nextly, we went to another strip. And if I did okay at this strip, Chris said that we could go over to the sandbar. This one is a little bit shorter, had another tree line to clear as you're coming in. And it was an awesome just practice session with energy management and really trying to hit your spot. You see where those two trees are? There's like that open area, that kind of bald spot. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, let's aim for that. Okay, cool. I feel pretty high. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad from here. Come around the corner here, you can use the, the the turn to slow you down. And when you say that, it's just because you're, since we're just in a turn, it's not as much efficient lift, and so yeah. you can just kind of waste some of the energy you, on the You can use the, the turn. turn to get rid of some of that energy, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I see that little bald spot, so I'm actually gonna aim a little short of that. Okay. I might come in a little bit dog leg here. I don't yeah, know. come over those trees. Yeah, kind of the right side of the trees. Okay. Because it looks like there's a gap. 
kind of this direction. There's like 50. Yep, that feels pretty good. There you go. Kind of leave that pitch alone there for a second. Okay. There you go, hold it. Pitch up, now blow burp of power. Oh, I didn't do it. Hold that stick back, don't let it come forward okay. on you. Yeah, a little tiny bit of power yep. up there. Yep, but that was that was really good. Okay. That approach was nice. Good, let's go do that again. That was okay. that was cool. Other than just a little bit of power yeah. there? Yeah, I mean, literally like this. Like, let me show you. Like, you come in, you could just kind of do... Okay. Yeah, just little little blurps of the just, throttle just will just bit. slow down that. And it's getting on and off, on and off, you uh -huh. know, just to play around with it. So. Okay. Cool. Okay, here All we right. go. All right, here we go. All right, this time I want to work on just, yeah, just noticing, like, okay, we're out of energy. I'm stick fully back. Yep. If I don't just, give it a little bit of energy, we're just going to bounce. Yep, and so. that's, that's where you're at on that one. Again, it wasn't terrible. And you don't want to release that back pressure either because then the tail starts getting light on it. You uh. want to pin that thing. But I, I really like that approach. That okay. was that was really... It felt slower, which is good. It was really nice, yeah. You were, man, right around 45, 50, somewhere in there. All right, let's see if I can do this a little better. And here, it's not, not terrible to be a little high. It's not, you know, you want that steep, stabilized approach. You don't want to drag it in over the top of the trees. There you go. Get rid of some of that power. Hold that nose up. Go. Fill that sink. Get rid of some of it. Add a little more. Nice. Stick in your gut as hard as you can put it there. That was that was a good one. Okay, you want the little bounce? I guess it was a little bounce. Yeah. Hard, hard not to bounce it a little bit, right? That was really good. Okay, so we were aiming at those trees. Look how close we are to this tree. Uh huh. We came in, we touched down next to that tree, and we stopped over here just that's past this close. tree. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty that's, short. That's really nice, man. That's really nice. Like the idea of like aiming for a spot. I feel embarrassed, but I've never really done that, honestly. Well, I mean, I've tried to like, you know, make the first turn off or whatever, but I've never looked at a spot and thought, okay, I need to be in the flare and touch down by that spot. Yeah. So that's good, good practice. It's a new thing for a lot of people. Chris told me I was ready for the sandbar. It required a little bit of a hike to get there. But thankfully, it was another gorgeous flight in the Texas Hill Country. Never disappoints. When we got to the sandbar, the first step was getting our bearings, understanding what the approach was gonna be, where we were landing, and what our go-around procedure would look like. If you look here, there's that lip, that's the end of the runway, uh -huh. and there's like some little uh, chunks of grass that look like dots just before, just after the lip. Yeah, So I that's that. the really the end of your runway. You okay, can see so where we're people- high. We're high right yeah, now. Yeah, we're a little high. Okay. Yep. Are we making left traffic or right? Uh, we'll make a right turn down the river and okay. then left traffic. Okay, so we'd be slower and lower right now. Yep, right in here. Yeah. We come in, okay. we would drag our spot. Uh huh. So right here will be um, our low pass. Okay. All right, and then we could start our shallow right turn. Okay, this is our go around here. We'll clear this power lines around the corner up here and then we'll make left traffic. Man, it was hard to contain my excitement. I was pumped, I was a little nervous, I was all the things. And really put into perspective what eight, 900 feet of usable runway actually looked like, it's totally different than simulating it on a much longer runway. It was so fun. So the next step was to drag our wheels down the runway just like we had practiced earlier that day. And this will be a drag. So we'll try to put it on okay. the mains okay. first time and we'll drag as far as we can and then uh, do another go around. Okay. Keep slowing it up. Pretty high, huh? Yeah, and give yourself some room. You know what I mean? Don't rush yourself. That's one thing people like to do is get in a big rush. This is your first time, so give yourself some room and get yourself in there close to those trees. That way you got plenty of room to uh, work with down low. Okay. Is sand like a lot spongier than uh, grass? It's Probably. not ter I mean, it's not a whole lot different. Okay. It's still pretty solid. Okay. Oh, there's like 50. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Okay. And of Con course, as you get closer to this contour, just kind of throttle back a little bit, let the airplane settle down over the top of these trees. Very nice. Beautiful. Little bumps coming over that river. Yep. Very good, very good. Beautiful. Little power here. All right, let's go ahead and start our go around. Okay. I didn't drag it very long. No, there. not very long, but that's okay. 
go ahead and bring in full power. We'll continue our go around here and keep climbing. Let's get the flaps, start coming up with those. Oh, that was really fun. Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> you know, it wasn't bad. The only thing was once you touch, you could have come back on the power a little bit more after we got it in the drag, yeah, you know, and kept it on the ground. We were a little fast and, and that caused when we hit that little bump to, uh, to uh -huh. fly again, but pretty, pretty good. It was definitely a landable approach. Yeah, we would have had room to stop for oh, sure. Oh, easy, yeah. And as soon as you get that tail wheel in that sand, it, it's like an anchor, man. Okay. <laughs> it just, it just. Throw the anchor out. Yeah, exactly, yep. With all this put together, it was time to try landing. This is years in the making for me, all coming down to this one moment. So Charlie, don't screw up the landing, man. all the uh, big rocks in the sand and go park by the other <laughs> guys. Nice to This experience was really eye-opening for me, and I learned a lot about flying that's really stuck with me. Now, I didn't have time to cover everything in this one video, and so I'm putting together a full debrief of the lessons learned, and when that's ready, that video will be right here on the screen. And in the meantime, a big thanks goes out to the team at TAC Aero for their training and their professionalism. They are incredible to work with, and a link to their website is down in the description if you'd like to learn more. So be sure to check them out, and I'll see you in that debrief video.